Hello, this is Mr. Bulby. We are doing CKLA Domain 1 for third grade, The Wind in the Willows, Lesson 7, Dolce Domum, Part 2. Several themes that we have and will continue to be discussing throughout the stories are friendship or loyalty, responsibility, irresponsibility, and hospitality. We are trying to keep a themes chart. If you have lost it, continue to make notes on a regular piece of paper, lined piece of paper, because there are always going to be several things to note in each chapter as we go. Okay. Literary tools that we have discussed and you should be aware of. Perspective, that is through whom, which character's eyes we are seeing the story. Dialogue, the conversation the characters are having with each other. Narration, that which is not dialogue in the story. The words that move the story along outside of the dialogue. Today is part two of Dolce Domum. Dolce Domum is Latin for home sweet home. The phrase home sweet home is similar to the saying there's no place like home. Mole is following his unerring nose down a tunnel when we last saw him. Predict what you think will happen in today's read aloud. How might some of the themes of friendship, loyalty, hospitality, responsibility, and irresponsibility play a role in the second half of this chapter? These are all things for you to think about as we approach the beginning of the lesson. Here's some core vocabulary which I encourage you to pause for a moment and write down or try to remember. Blues, which is a state of depression or unhappiness. Capital, which means excellent. It's the kind of phrase they use in Scotland and England, referring to something that is awesome, excellent. It's capital idea, capital, my friend. Dismally is gloomily or hopelessly. Forage means to seek, search, or look around. Perceive is to notice something through your senses, to interpret something in a particular way. Perceive, which is a lot like perception, because that is how the person is perceiving something. Like a story, when you're looking at a different perspective, is the same root that perceive is. Slumber is to sleep. Okay begin with the rest of our story. It was close and airless, and the earthly smell was strong. The mole struck a match, and by its light the rats saw that they were standing in open space. The space was neatly swept and sanded underfoot. Directly facing them was Mole's little front door, with Mole's end painted in gothic lettering over the bullpen at his side. Mole took down a lantern from the nail on the wall and lit it and Rat, looking around, saw that they were in a sort of forecourt. The garden seat stood in one side of the door and on the other a roller. The mole was a tidy animal and could not stand having his ground kicked up by other animals into little heaps of earth. Down on one side of the forecourt ran a skittle alley with benches along it and little wooden tables in the middle with a small round pond. Here's a picture of a roller what he would have been using to flatten the ground. Okay. Mole's face beamed at the sight of all these objects. He hurried Rat through the door. Little lamp in the hall took one glance around his old home. Immediately, he saw the dust laying thick on everything. He saw the cheerless, deserted look of the long neglected house collapsed again on the hall chair. Oh, Ratty, he cried dismally. Why ever did I do it? Why did I bring you to this poor, cold little place on a night like this? The rat paid no heed to him. She was running here and there, opening doors, inspecting rooms and cupboards, and lighting lamps with candles. What a capital little house this is, he called out cheerily. Everything here and everything in its place. The first thing we want is a good fire. I'll fetch the wood and the coals and you get a duster. Encouraged by his companion, 
the mole dusted and polished with energy, while the rat soon had a cheerful blaze roaring up in the chimney. He hailed the mole to come and warm himself, but mole promptly had another fit of the blues. Rat, he moaned, how about your supper, you poor, cold, hungry, weary animal? I have nothing to give you. What a fellow you are for giving in, said the rat calmly. Why, only just now I saw a sardine opener on the kitchen dresser. And everybody knows that means there are sardines about somewhere. Pull yourself together and come with me and forage. They went and foraged accordingly, hunting through every cupboard, turning out every drawer. The result was not so very depressing after all. A tin of sardines, a box of captain's biscuits, nearly full, and a German sausage encased in silver paper. There's a banquet for you, observed the rat as he arranged the table. No bread, groaned the mole. No butter, no, no caviar, no champagne, continued the rat grinning. And that reminds me, what's that little door at the end of the passage? Your cellar, of course. Rat made for the cellar door and presently reappeared with a bottle in each paw and under another under each arm. Now, wherever did you pick up these prints? Make the place look so homelike they do. No wonder you're so fond of it, Mole. Tell us all about it and how you came to make it what it is. The Mole, much cheered by the Rat's fine compliments, took time to show off his splendid abode. The Rat, though desperately hungry, allowed the Mole to hold court. At last, the Rat succeeded in decoying him to the table and had just got to seriously work with the sardine opener when sounds were heard from the forecourt without. Sounds like the scuffling of small feet, the condensed murmur of tiny voices. Now, all in a line, hold the lantern up a bit, Tommy. Clear your throats first. Where's young Bill? What's up? inquired the rat. I think it must be the field mice, replied the mole. They go around carol singing regularly at this time of year. I used to give them hot drinks and supper too sometimes. Let's have a look at them, cried the rat, jumping up and running to the door. It was a pretty sight that met their eyes. In the forecourt, lit by the dim rays of lantern, some eight or ten little field mice stood in a semi-circle. They had red scarves around their necks, and their forepaws were thrust deep into their pockets. With bright, beady eyes, they glanced shyly at each other as the door opened. One of the elder ones that carried the lantern proclaimed, Now then, one, two, three, and forthwith their shrill little voices rose up. <clears throat> Villagers all this frosty tide, let your door swing open wide. The wind may follow and snow beside. You draw us in by your fire to bide. Joy shall be yours in the morning. Here we stand in the cold and the sleet, blowing fingers and stamping feet. Come from far away you to greet, you by the fire and we in the street. Bidding you joy in the morning, for ere one half of the night was gone, sudden a storm has led us on, raining bliss and venison, bliss tomorrow and more anon, joy for every morning. Whew. As you can tell, I am not a singer, but there you go. <laughs> Keep going. <clears throat> Good man Joseph toiled through the snow, saw the star or stay below. Mary, she might not further go. Welcome, thatch and litter below. Joy was hers in the morning. Then they heard the angels tell who were the first to cry, Noel. Animals all as it befell. In the stable where they did dwell, joy shall be those in the morning. That is the Carol of the Mice appears in Chapter 5 of The Wind of the Willows. The field mice sing to Mole and Rat. 
if you follow that YouTube link, you can listen to some other better, much, much better singers <laughs> singing, singing that song. Anyway, famous carols were actually very popular once upon a time, even a hundred years ago, when people would go around during the holiday seasons and sing various songs to cheer people up to make the holidays bright. As it were, that is... Alright, <clears throat> moving on. The voices ceased. The singers exchanged sidelong glances, but for a moment only. Then, from up above and far away, down the tunnel they had so lately traveled, came the sound of distant bells ringing a joyful and clangorous peal. Very well sung, boys, cried the rat heartily. Now come along in and warm yourselves. Yes, come along in, field mice, cried the mole eagerly. This is quite like old times. Shut the door after you. Pull up that settle to the fire. Now you just wait a minute while we... Oh, Ratty, he cried in despair. We've nothing to give them. You leave all that to me, said the masterful rat. Here are you with the lantern I want to talk with you. Now tell me, are there any shops open at this hour of night? Why, certainly, sir, replied the field mouse respectively. At this time of year, our shops keep open to all sorts of hours. Then look here, said the rat. You go off at once, you and your lantern, and you get me. Here, much muted conversation ensued, such as, Fresh, mind, no, a pound of that will do. If you get it there, can't get it there, try somewhere else. Yes, of course, homemade. Finally, there was a chink of coin passing from paw to paw. The field mouse was provided with a basket for his purchases, and off he hurried. The rest of the field mice perched in a row on the settle, their small legs swinging, gave themselves up to the enjoyment of the fire. The rat, meanwhile, was busy examining the label on one of the bottles. I perceive this to be ginger beer, he remarked approvingly. The very thing. Now we shall be able to mull some ginger beer. Get the things ready, mull, while I draw the corks. It did not take long to prepare the brew, and soon every field mouse was sipping and coughing and choking. For a little mulled ginger beer goes a long way and wiping his eyes and laughing. They act plays too, these fellows, the mole explained to the rat. Make them up by themselves. And very well they did too. They gave us a capital one last year, but a field mouse who was captured at sea by pirates. Here, you, you were in it. Get up and recite a bit. The field mouse dressed, got up on his legs, giggled shyly, looked around the room and remained absolutely tongue-tied. His comrades cheered him on. Mole coaxed and encouraged him, and the rat went so far as to shake him, but nothing could overcome this stage fright. The now mute field mouse was saved from further encouragement by the sound of the door opening. The field mouse with the lantern had reappeared in the basket. There was no more talk of play acting once the contents of the basket had been tumbled out onto the table. Under the generalship of rat, everyone was set to do something. In a very few minutes, supper was ready. As they ate, they talked of old times. They clattered off at last, very grateful indeed, when the door had closed on, la on the last of them. Mole and Rat kicked the fire up, drew their chairs in, and discussed the events of the day. At last, the Rat, with a tremendous yawn, said, Mole, I'm ready to drop. That your own bunk over on that side? Very well, then. I'll take this. Rat clambered into his bunk and rolled himself well up in the sheets. Blankets. Blankets. And slumber gathered him in. All right. Were your predictions correct about how the themes of friendship, loyalty, hospitality, responsibility, and irresponsibility play a role in the second half of the chapter? Why? And why not? At the beginning of the read aloud, Mole looked around dismally at his empty, dusty home and experiences the blues over the state of his home. How does Rat help Mole? Rat lights a fire, helps Mole clean up, tells Mole he has a capital home, helps Mole forage for food, etc. What themes do you think Rat's actions demonstrate? Hmm. 
Well, friendship or loyalty. Rat helps Mole feel better as a friend should. Hospitality, even in Mole's home. Rat is taking charge and making things cheerier. While Mole and Rat are foraging for food, who comes to the door? What do they do? Field mice. They come to sing a carol for Rat and Mole. How is the theme of hospitality demonstrated through the characters' actions in today's read aloud? Rat and Mole welcome the carolers and singers into Mole's home. Rat acts hospitably by buying food and drinks for the carolers, even though he's not even in his own home. Mole offers Rat a place to sleep, etc. So all of those are good ideas for you to write down in your themes chart for the hospi hospitality section. So remember, we want to keep up with everything that we see throughout the story, where there is friendship, loyalty, hospitality, responsibility, and irresponsibility. In your Domain 1 Listening Journal on page 7, write examples of each theme from today's story. What words could you use to describe how Mole feels at the end of an evening? happy, content, and sleepy. Do you think he is glad that he is back on his own in his own home for the evening? Why? Yes, Mole feels comfortable in his home. He is happy to see the field mice. He had missed his home and is glad to see it. How about Rat? Is he comfortable in Mole's home? Mm, yeah. He is. At the end of the evening, Slumber gathers rat in and he sleeps peacefully in Mole's home. Now close your eyes and imagine you are in Mole's home after he and Rat have cleaned it up. Describe what you would perceive through your senses to answer the following. What do you see? Hear? Feel? Smell? And taste? What kind of friend is Rat, and how do you know? He is helpful, kind, and forceful. Because he helps Mole without complaining or thinking of himself. He also puts himself out there. He's very assertive. He wants to help. He wants to do everything he can. He comes up with ideas. He's creative. He's optimistic as well, which happens to be the life skill that we were working on this week. Um, it lined up pretty well for this particular time, may not in the future, but it is optimism that moves him. Whereas pessimism, which is the opposite of optimism, is very much what Mole is feeling. He's, woe is me, he's dismal, he's depressed about this or that, but Rat keeps him going, keeps encouraging him along. It's a good way to live. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question, I'll give you a minute to think about the question, then I will ask you to turn to your neighbor and discuss the question. Finally, I will call on several of you to share what you discussed with your partner. And again, written responses are fine if you're doing this extra later. The story today is told from Mole's perspective. How do you think the story would be different if it was told from Rat's perspective? The word work for today is forage. In the read aloud, you heard Rat say to Mole, Come with me and forage. Forage means to look around and search for something. Squirrels forage for acorns in the fall so they can store them away for the winter. Can you name any other animal that forage for food and the types of foods they forage? Be sure to use the word forage when you tell about it. Very good. Here's an acting activity, if we have time. Demonstrate to a partner how you would forage for your food in the kitchen or in the woods, or how an animal in nature would forage for food. Make sure to use the word forage in complete sentences throughout this activity. Continuing to learn the word forage. Here is the themes chart, if you don't have it already, which you should, that you should be filling out as we go. Again, friendship, loyalty, hospitality, 
responsibility and irresponsibility. For this chapter, I wouldn't say there's too much that we learned about irresponsibility. But don't worry. The next several chapters, we're going to be dealing with Mr. Toad, and there is plenty of irresponsibility ahead for us. Student's Choice. We will vote by a show of hands for one read aloud from the series you'd like to hear again. After the read aloud, we'll see if you noticed anything new or different during the second reading or did not notice during the first reading. And of course, with these YouTube videos that I'm posting, you can go back and listen to any of the read alouds again and see if you learned something the second time around or third time around that you didn't the first or second. <laughs> And here is the listening journal, page 7. You would write the examples from today's read aloud on there. You can also copy those over to your chart that you should be keeping on the different themes throughout the lessons that we are doing. That is the end of lesson 7. Thank you and hope to see hear you and then or hope to see you well enjoy the next lesson. <laughs> Goodbye.